Right, so um, it's been about six weeks since I've had a chance to look at the monitor. Uh, the last thing I did, unfortunately, was to have to swap the power supply over again because uh, another one has blown up. So the stage we are now is we do have a working power supply, but there is some sounds of distress from it. Uh, there's some uh, internal arcing by the sound of things, so uh, I'm not too hopeful about how long this one's going to last. Um, as you can probably see, we've got a scan but no video signal. So uh, I think the thing to do now is to start some uh, signal chasing through the video board, which is on the left hand side of the monitor, and uh, do some basic scope work. And at that point the EHT power supply is just blown up and you've just probably heard the circuit breaker go. Right, so uh, unfortunately we've had a bit of a setback. Uh, another power supply has blown up. Uh, rather than deal with uh, that, I think in this video we're going to try and make some progress on some of the other faults on the monitor which don't actually need the EHT power supply working. In particular, we saw that there was actually a raster on the screen before the power supply failed, but there was no uh, image of the test signal reaching the tube. So that points to a problem with the video input uh, stages of the monitor so I think we're going to concentrate on those now. For that we can actually use an external power supply and just power up the circuit board alone while we chase the signal through it. So without further ado I think we'll, we'll uh, make a start on that. So there we are there's the external power supply running the board um, 11 volts at uh, about 100 milliamps. Uh, as bad luck would have it the uh, main power supply section of the monitor has also developed a fault so uh, we've got an alternative but to run this board on an external supply that's of uh, no consequence it'll just be another fault to fix so here we're injecting our test signal um, onto the board the relays that select between input 1 and input 2 are actually driven um, from a voltage that's coming from off this board so there's a, a just a, a jumper wire to feed the test signal straight onto the board um, directly into C101 and that's what's showing on the top trace of the scope. Uh, the other channel of the scope is monitoring um, just beyond C107 and we actually have the benefit of a, a drawing showing what we should expect to uh, see at that test point. But as you can see from the scope we've got absolutely nothing there. So it's a fair assumption to um, say that the, the fault lies somewhere in the first uh, four transistors, somewhere there. Um, the obvious thing to do is now to divide the, the circuit into two and we'll look halfway along the circuit. Uh, a good place then would be the emitter of TR101 and there's a convenient test point 42. So we'll have a look there and we'll see whether we've got a signal there. And hey presto, we have our signal. So. It looks like um, the fault is now somewhere beyond TR101, which leaves um, a few components. Well, only TR102 and 103 um, could be suspect. Now, I've actually taken those components out and measured them on the transistor tester, and they are OK. So, attention now needs to fall on, on how actually the circuit works. And there's a sort of curious component uh, that you can see on the circuit diagram, which is a resistor and a light bulb that falls on that resistor. And that forms part of the contrast control, i.e. A, a gain control element. The component in question is actually a resistor, and this was a very popular component in the 60s and 70s to give um, a remote control of a gain stage within an amplifier. It has a, a certain advantage in as much as the control signal can be isolated from the actual gain element. So in this case it's a light dependent resistor and an ordinary incandescent light bulb falling upon it which gives the variable resistance and hence the change in gain through the circuit. So I think I'm going to have a look at that and see if either the control circuit is faulty or the actual component is faulty, it being an incandescent light, um, these are prone to failures. Right, so there's the suspect component removed, and we'll just measure the resistance first of all of the component, and we're looking around about 12 
15 mega ohms there. So that's the light dependent resistor obviously with no light falling upon it. And the actual filament lamp, it runs on the other two terminals there. And totally open circuit. Many, many tens of mega ohms there. So I think that's a fair assumption that that component's failed. So we now need to look for a replacement for a 1960s Raytheon CK1121 resistor. That's going to be fun, isn't it? Well, a bit of luck for once. And here we have a resistor. It's not the correct type, it's uh, the same manufacturer, but this is a CK1116. And a quick study of the data sheets shows that I think we can actually make this work with a little bit of adaptation. Um, this has come out of a link camera from the 1970s and the item provided a very similar function actually uh, in that case controlling the gain stage of one of the colour channels within the camera. Um, the use of such a device was a, a very simple circuit technique that enabled the amplifier which sat in the head of the camera to be con controlled through many hundreds of feet of cable from the remote control position. So um, luckily I have a few spares of these so uh, we'll give it a go fitting this into the monitor. First of all we'll just take a quick look at some of the characteristics uh, of the device. And here we can see I'm measuring across the with the light bulb element here and we've got around about 22 ohms. If I look at the resistor part, I'm just measuring my skin resistance here actually. Um, I'll try and hold it with just one terminal on and it's beyond the, the range of this multimeter which is at 20 mega ohms. So not quite the same characteristic as the one we're trying to replace but um, these will be operated with the light bulb partly on so we're looking at resistances of around the 100 ohm mark so the fact that this is mega ohms or many mega ohms with the light bulb off is neither here nor there right so um, after a little bit of fiddling around um, I've decided to actually put the component uh, on a little bodge board here a um, couple of reasons for that. I had to fit a, a series resistor to try and match the characteristics of the um, effectively the light bulb that's inside this resistor um, to match um, the slightly different characteristics of the one that's come out. Um, plus I thought that if, if one of these does ever turn up um, uh, at a later date well we could easily fit the other one back, uh, the replacement back in. Another possibility might be to try and delicately open up the package here and replace the filament lamp either with something similar uh, or an LED or something like that, but that would need a bit more thought. So in the meantime, um, it was quite the easiest thing to do was to make a little bodge board. So the meter is now showing the voltage across the resistor itself. And as we advance the contrast control slowly, we can see that the video waveform increases just as it should. So there may still be a little bit of adjustment necessary on that resistor value because um, the video waveform is, is now exceeding what it should be according to the uh, circuit diagram. So it may be that this is rather more sensitive than I thought, uh, according to the data sheet. Um, in fact, I did pull out two spare resistors and they did measure very slightly differently in terms of uh, the cold resistance of the lamp uh, inside and things like that. So my choice of resistor might need further refinement. And you can see that as I get to only around about one and a half volts the video waveform is, is way higher than it needs to be and is now starting to distort. So may need to look at that again when we've actually got um, uh, a working working HT supply and we can actually see a picture. But uh, I think that's pretty good progress and we've got uh, a working video amplifier stage again now.